many places we could begin a flight of Apollo Saturn V. Perhaps one of the best is when the 36-story tall Saturn V moves out of its huge assembly building and heads for the launch pad. Once at the pad, night and day, checkout and testing go on until the final countdown starts in the launch control room. The countdown continues until the five engines of the first stage ignite. Within the first few seconds, many things happen. Here in slow motion are two of them. Behind the yellow post, one of the arms which provides ground power swings clear. The yellow post is one of four which hold the rocket until engines reach full power. As the rocket moves up, it pulls the cord you see, allowing a protective cover to fall over the hold down post. Higher up on the rocket, another ground service arm moves clear. There are eight of these arms, and they all have to swing clear of the vehicle at the same time. At this point, about six million pounds are being moved straight up by sheer brute force. To provide this force, the five engines are gulping fuel at a fantastic rate. A rate that would drain the fuel tanks of 15 DC-8s in one minute. As it flies, the rocket is guided by an onboard computer, a very busy computer. During the entire flight, it will make hundreds of millions of calculations. From these calculations come the guidance command. These go to the powerful engines which move in any direction to keep the rocket on the proper course. These scenes were taken by a camera mounted on a tracking airplane. Notice how the engine exhaust plume is spreading out. This happens because the rocket is now about 40 miles up in very thin air. Very shortly now, the bottom stage will drain its fuel tanks and engines shut off, triggering a series of events leading to the separation and ignition of the second stage. This is a close view of the first stage falling away. The camera is mounted on the second stage. Liquid hydrogen is the fuel for this stage and burns much cleaner than the high-grade kerosene used by the first stage. This is why you can't see any flames, even though the engines are burning. Next, the ring that connects the two stages falls off. In the bottom of the picture, clouds cover part of the Florida coast. Cape Kennedy is about in the middle. In a short time, the rocket will be out of camera range but the rest of the flight will be similar to what you've already seen. The second stage will drop away, and the third stage will boost the payload into orbit. If this were a moon flight, a few hours later, the third stage engine would start again and send the payload toward the moon. Successful Apollo flights are the result of careful handling at every point from manufacturing plant to the launch pad.